you're bucking, you put it back straight. Hey guys, Dan with Kane Custom Garage. And today we're gonna do a video on the history of chainsaws. Since I've got so many examples of some early ones all the way up through the 70s and 80s, so I thought, shoot, let's drag them all out and sort of go through the uh, progression of the chainsaws. I got some two-man ones, some of the early single um, direct drive chainsaws, gear drive, mini chainsaws. So yeah, we'll fire a few of them up. But yeah, let's go over it. Let's uh, check out the history of chainsaws. Okay, so before chainsaws, this was it guys. Axes and hand saws. That was it, the old misery whip. And so yeah, these guys would be out there felling trees with their axes and then bucking them up with the saws. So yeah, this is a this is a Puget Sound pattern axe. See how deep it is, so they can get into the chop, get in there and chop deep into that big tree. And so yeah, those poor guys would just be out there chopping away. Chopping at them trees. And then they bust out their saw. Some other poor guy would get on the other end. And they take in the sawing. <laughs> that one flops around. Here's a little one. Somebody made, made a hand saw out of, I think this is a piece of one of those big ones. Yeah, they just take the end of song. So you can imagine how long it would take to not only to fell a tree, but then to buck it up. Man, that'd take forever. And those guys were probably jacked, big old guys. So anyways, they needed to come up with something else. So let's go in the garage and we'll take a look at some early chainsaws. Okay guys, so Transitioning from axes and hand saws, they, uh, these guys got tired of doing all that. They're like, there's got to be a better way. And so they came out, they started making, uh, you know, powered chainsaws, gas powered chainsaws. And actually, I'm getting, I'm getting them ahead of myself because before this, they actually had what they call a drag saw and it was just basically it was just basically one a, a saw like this and they put it on like a mechanism and a, a lot of them were steam powered and I, I think some of them were probably gas powered too but it would just sit there and go like that and saw on the log bucking it they, they could only use it for bucking you know up until then all the trees the trees were still mainly fell just by axes. Man, them guys must have been ripped. And so anyways, they used the drag saws for a while and those things were a pain in the ass because you had to drag it around and like it was a big giant piece of equipment and just cumbersome. And, and so they started using chainsaws and the early ones had what they call scratcher chain and the chain, the teeth were basically like this. They were just straight, sticking straight out. And they sort of cut, you know, okay, I guess, but they weren't the greatest. And so then they, they uh, invented the, some guy was watching a wood beetle or something. <laughs> he was watching it eat on the wood and he got this idea for the chipper chain. And that's what, you know, all your modern chainsaws have now. But anyways, so when they first started making chainsaws, um, you know, they were underpowered and a lot, of the, a lot of the trees were huge. And so the only way they could get enough power to pull through the big logs was um, they had to, all the early chainsaws had to be gear, gear driven or gear reduction so that they had enough torque to pull through the wood. And so the chain speed is really slow, but it's got a lot of torque. And the first, you know, I think the first, the first chainsaws that they used were these two-man saws. 
one guy would get on one end and somebody else would get on the other end. And these saws, um, the early saws, they just had, they, did, they hadn't invented diaphragm carburetors yet. And so the float carburetors, you couldn't turn it on its side or it would, you know, flood out, quit running. And so what they, what they, uh, the, the solution for that was, they just made the power head pivot. So like when you're bucking, you, you got it straight up and down like this, and then you want, and then when you want to fell a tree, you turn it sideways like that. And that way the engine's always upright. But yeah, what a beast, huh? Here's another, here's an extra transmission that came with, came with that one. I got that from Christina's grandfather, but yeah, see, you can see the reduction. See, it's spinning pretty fast here, but it's pretty slow here. And also the oil that oils the chain goes in here too. So there's oil for the gearbox and there's oil for the chain oiler too. So that's pretty interesting. And this old beast actually runs, if you can believe that, watch this. I just had it going. Whoa! cylinder and man the thing just runs smooth really well made engine mercury key coffer and uh believe it or not when i got this from christina's grandpa we literally i literally did nothing to the motor i just put fuel in it the only thing that was screwed up was the starter was jacked up in it so i had to fix the starter to where it works but yeah i mean this thing starts and runs it probably sat in that shed for you know 40 years who knows but yeah, you just turn up, turn on the fuel, and she fires right up. Neat old. We actually cut some wood with it, and yeah, it's it's a it's a beast. And these old saws, they had big old three quarter inch chain. And then here's a McCulloch two man saw, same concept. This this one doesn't run. I think Christina's grandpa bought this brand new. That's what they were saying. That's what her dad was telling me anyways. But yeah, that's a pretty cool piece of history there. And so yeah, in the beginning, that's yeah, basically all they had were these two-man saws. And then they started making these smaller one-man saws. And this is a Pioneer IEL chainsaw. This is probably like early 50s. These are, this is like a 1953. This is probably early 50s. So the chainsaws really started coming around like in the early, late 40s, early 50s. And then here's one of the first direct drive chainsaws, no gear drive. The Pioneer. I think this is like a, oh, what is it? I can't remember. I'll put it on the screen. HB, or I always get all their designations messed up. But see, same concept on this one. You just, if you want to... Uh, if you want to cut sideways, you just got to flip the flip the carburetor side. Or, so, or yeah, if you want to cut this way, you got to flip the carb that way. And then if you're bucking, you put it back straight. And this one doesn't run. I still got to restore it. But yeah, it's got big old, probably like 9 16 chain on that. They didn't have very many roller nose bars early on. But yeah, just slow chain speed and yeah, just slow but steady. And then here's another one. And this one's interesting. It's a, this is more of like a homeowner saw. Freaking heavy. The old David Bradley Sears. You could get that right out of the Sears catalog. But interestingly, this one has a float carburetor so I mean you couldn't fell a tree with it the only thing you can do with it is buck because if you turn it sideways it ain't gonna run see here's what the carburetor looks like the float carburetor 
So those are the early ones. So yeah, early saws, early 50s, mid 50s. Okay, let's talk about the differences between float style carburetors and the diaphragm style carburetors, guys. So the older saws just had these float style ones. And so it's strictly gravity fed, gas tanks up here. And so it just feeds into the carburetor. And so if you turn it on its side, it's not gonna work. It'll just flood out or starve itself out. So early ones had the float style. And then when they came up with the diaphragm style carburetor, it has diaphragm in it. Um, you know, these little rubber diaphragms and they run off of the crankcase impulse off of the motor. And so it's constantly moving and there's a pump, there's a fuel pump side that pumps the fuel and then there's the metering side that, that sort of tells it how much fuel to give it depending on the motor, how the RPMs of the motor. So it's all run off of the impulse from the crankcase and so you can turn the carburetor any way you want and it'll still run. So that's the difference guys. So float style and then diaphragm style. Here's another early saw that I found at an estate sale. The Titan made in Seattle, Washington, made by the Mill and Mine Company. Pretty cool old saw. This was one of my, this is what got me into collecting chainsaws was this guy right here. I found it at an estate sale. I think I paid like 15 bucks for it. It was nasty, dirty. They thought it was froze up, but it was just the starter. But yeah, this is, I don't know if you'd call this a professional. Yeah, I guess you could call this a professional saw. It's heavy duty. It's heavy. That's for damn sure. But yeah, let me see if I can get it to pop off for you. This one, this one will usually run. Let's see. Come on. Oh, oh, oh. It'll make your ears bleed. Oh yeah, she wants to go. This carburetor is finicky on this thing. Operated today that's awesome so yeah there's your early saws guys okay so now we're gonna move on to the more modern saws the uh, the uh, we got a McCulloch and a home light both gear drive but they both have diaphragm carburetors so now we can turn them any way we want but yeah look at that beast Big old gearbox on there. I don't, I don't want to fire this thing up. It's a pain in the butt, but, but the chain speed is ridiculously slow. Like when it's running, it's just like, Bleh. the chain just moves slow. But it sounds killer. Look at that stainless muffler on these things. McCulloch's were, were sort of a innovative company back then, sort of ahead of their time. And then look at this freaking boat anchor. Big old heavy. That looks like a Frankenstein saw. But yeah, same thing. It's got a gearbox. Oil for the transmission. Oil for the oiler. Manual oiler only. 
big old logger saw there. Both of those are. Oh, and then here's another. So, so, oops, sorry. So supposedly, this was like one of the first true direct drive saws, and this was a really good seller for Pioneer. I think this is a 1956, 55, 56, something like that. Professional saw. So yeah, now we're getting into the, ah, these guys with the freaking tile saw. So now we're getting into the late 60s, early 70s. Here's that 270 that I restored, PM Canadian. These guys started after OMC um, bought out Pioneer. This thing fires up. Let's see if it'll run. Oh, almost. Come on, baby. It has a weird choke. You have to hold the choke. see how slow the chain speed is on these slow but sure so yeah you got your pioneer ra this is a hundred cc chainsaw 1958 this one's probably like 69 70 something like that i think this one's a little bit older maybe Another PM Canadian 187. And then you got your steel S10. These were made for quite a few years, I think. Late 60s, all through the 70s. And then they have the, the other version of this, the 08S, which you see it's sort of it's more of a it's a top handle version of this. And they, they uh, made the concrete saw version of it like clear up into the 90s or something. But, this is sort of a tried but true design. This one's probably like the early 70s. So yeah, that's sort of the mid, the mid stuff. So yeah, guys, back in the day, they had like hundreds of chainsaw manufacturers. Same thing with like automobiles and all that stuff. And then, you know, just like everything else, the small guys go out of business. They keep consolidating. And pretty soon you're left with just a few major manufacturers. And so today you just have, you know, Steel, Husqvarna, Echo, a few other ones. Same with cars. You know, you got Ford, Chevy, GMC, Dodge. Not the hundreds of manufacturers like you did back in the day. And then the other thing I wanted to mention was, so yeah, then, then there was your big professional, like, logging saws mainly probably like steel husqvarna big gargantuan saw like this guy this is another one probably from the late 70s early 80s but that's you know this is an 051 big saw for the logging industry and so you had that still pretty big bars on them but they didn't they didn't do the uh, gear drive stuff anymore because they they got the motors they got the motors to where they could actually pull some chain and and uh, maintain the chain speed and the torque without having to do the gear drive so just thought I'd mention the professional saws like that I also wanted to include the mini chainsaws guys because yeah before they just had you know the full size chainsaws and then they started coming out with these mini chainsaws McCulloch claim to have the world's lightest chainsaw world's lightest chainsaw right there and uh it was pretty amazing i mean it's, there's a lot of power for the small size that it is pretty powerful little chainsaw and so yeah they started having these mini chainsaws 
probably like in the 70s the motor technology got to where they could make the motors smaller and faster here's a steel 011 it's a good saw so yeah can't forget the mini chainsaws and then the later you get the faster and lighter the chainsaws are so now we're getting into like the late 70s early 80s and so pioneer started making lighter faster saws this is a p40 they made these they made um, the p series was a really popular saw in the late 70s and early 80s they had the p40 p50 p60 great old saws and of course McCulloch had their 1010 the 10 series the 1010 was a pretty popular saw and then they had bigger versions of it the 10 you know they had like the 10 what oh I got one over here here's a 710 that I still need to clean up bigger version of it and then John Sered John Sered's had their saws and they were pretty early on in the game, but this is, well, let's see, this one's an earlier one here. I love the John Surrett saws. They're beautiful. Beautiful piece of machinery. This is probably late 60s, early 70s, but they started making saws like in the early 60s, I think, late 50s maybe. The John Surrett's are really cool. Here's a more modern John Surrett, big professional 70E. Oh, yeah. also wanted to mention guys um the safety features that sort of came along safety and ergonomics so echo was the first chainsaw to do anti-vibe and so basically they'd put rubber mounts like the, on this one they're up here rubber mounts that isolated the uh, vibration from the operator and the motor and uh that helped a lot because i guess the vibration would really mess up Guys, you know, the nerves in your hands and stuff would start to go numb after a while. Like after years of doing it, so it was hard on people. So they started doing anti-vibe in all the saws so it didn't vibrate you to death. And then and then uh, later, which I'll have to find out, but yeah, they started doing chain breaks for safety. So... That was some safety stuff they did. Chain break, anti-vibe. This one has a hand guard, which I guess that's better than nothing. But yeah, so they tried to improve safety. They tried to improve mufflers so they weren't so loud. Like, look at that muffler on that big 750 Echo as compared to this Titan. It's basically just a straight pipe. <laughs> so anyways, just thought I'd mention that. So yeah, they just kept getting lighter and faster. Here's the XL12 Home Light. Pretty popular chainsaw back in the day. They made millions of them from the late 60s all the way up into the 80s. Even Maybe even the early 90s, basically, a version of it. Here's a bigger Home Light XL76. Nice, fast, strong saw. Then you started getting into the late 80s, early 90s. He's this guy with this tile saw over there. So here's the Husqvarna. This is like late 80s. They started getting into more plastic. Here's a 70s Husqvarna, professional full-size saw. 
And so yeah, right up until the right up until the nineties, here's one that JK Saw Shop built for me. Nowadays these guys are getting into porting them and souping them up. They're light, they're fast. And I mean these things just blast through the wood, you know, compared to these old saws. They're probably like, I don't know, like five times faster. Come on. difference from this to those old things so yeah chainsaws have come a long ways I mean in some ways they stayed pretty much the same but then in a lot of ways they're completely different and then of course we can't forget the uh, homeowner saws because yeah there's a there's always the cheap homeowner version of chainsaws that you can get at Home Depot and stuff like this home light. I mean, and they're all right for around the house use, but it's not going to last in a commercial environment. But I just thought I'd mention those, the homeowner ones, the the old the old home light XL2 that was sort of a homeowner saw. And then here's the old the craftsman craftsman that you always see basically the the wild thing yeah okay for occasional use but eh. so yeah i had to i had to mention the homeowner saws because that's like a totally different class and then the only real modern saw i have is one that i'm going to work on here here's a more modern steel see they're basically all plastic this one's dirty and nasty but all plastic so there's my version of the history of chainsaws guys hope you found it informative i figured i might as well i got all these chainsaws laying around here might as well get some use out of them do some educational stuff with them so yeah just showing from the early to the latest and i don't even have anything past like the 80s and 90s so after then after that they even got faster and lighter you know, fuel injection, auto-tune, they tune themselves. So yeah, pretty crazy. But anyways, I got a lot of videos of individual chainsaws, working on chainsaws. So if you like that stuff, subscribe to the channel and check out my other videos. Alright, we'll catch you on the next one, guys.